Hello students and welcome to this video for Excel chapter 2 hands-on exercise number 1. Um, we are going to be on page 492 for your exercise but I do want to point out a couple of things before we actually get started. So it is page 492 but I'm actually looking here um, at page 488 in your textbook. There's some new things here. We, we did work with formulas um, here in this past chapter but we didn't really get into the, in depth into them and we're going to be doing that more with this chapter. Um, and some things I want to refer to right away is, of course, using relative, absolute, and mixed cell references. So cell references is what we're talking about. There's a relative one, and that's the one we normally use, um, where if I put in a formula and I copy it to something else, it's going to basically copy the same thing, but of course it's relative to the new one. So for instance, if I take uh, formula from here and I were to use the fill handle and fill it down over here it would do whatever it was but moving it one cell down each time that's a relative cell reference then you have absolute cell references and an absolute cell reference provides a constants reference to a specific cell so that means if I put in an absolute cell reference, even if I move it down here to this cell, it's still going to calculate the same thing using the specific cells I refer to. It won't move down as we go through it. So that's an absolute cell reference. You basically use the dollar signs there. And then, of course, a mixed cell reference combines the absolute and the relative. So it might be I say I want um, this number to multiply by, and then I go down each one of these here. And so when I put in the formula, I could put this as an absolute cell reference, and I can leave this as a uh, excuse me a um, relative cell reference, um, and that's how I have a mixed one. So uh, basically, the three types. Remember, absolute is it doesn't change regardless of the position. Relative, of course, means it's relative to the position it changes, and of course, mixed is where it combines both. And um, if you didn't get that fully at this point, um, we're going to go more in depth here with the exercise. So we're on page 492 of your textbook, and we're dealing with formula basics. So we're going to use a relative cell reference in step one. It says letter A, we're opening up Excel chapter two, hands-on exercise one, loans file. And we're going to save it here, of course, with the appropriate name. So I'm going to choose save as, I'm going to choose browse. I'm checking to make sure I'm saving it to the right folder. and then adding of course underscore my last name and then my first name and you're going to do that of course with your last name your first name then step B it says click cell D8 so cell D8 I'm under amount financed type equal sign it says click cell B8. So B8, which is house cost, I believe. Yes. So cell B8 right under house cost. Then it says step C, type the minus sign, so hyphen, and click cell C8, which is down under down payment. So right now we got equals B8 minus C8, and we're using semi selection. And then it says, step D, click enter. So right up here, enter, that check mark. And of course, we can see here, uh, it shows 320,000. Then it says, step E, double click the D8 fill handle. So remember, the fill and handle is right here. It's this green square in the corner of the cell. Um, I just moved my mouse there. You can see the little pl black plus sign. I'm going to double click it. Of course, it's filling the active rows here. So it went down the column with the active rows and just copied my cell reference here. And it says click cell um, D9. This is step F and look at the formula. So I did. And of course, it changed it. It went down one. This is a relative cell reference. And that says press the down arrow um, and look at the cell references in the formula bar to see how the reference has changed. And you can see it on my screen. Um, each one, it just it went down one for each one. All right, step two, using an absolute cell reference. So we just did relative. Now we're going to use absolute. It's different from what we've done so far. It says step A, click cell F8. So I'm going to go over here to F8. It's under rate per period. Then I'm going to type in equals 
e8 slash b5. So equals e8 slash b5 and click enter. So I'm going back up to that check mark near the formula bar. And you can see it calculated it down here. Then it says step C, double click the cell F8 fill handle. So I'm going to double click on it. And then it says click cell F9. And then view the results. So see figure 2.7. Um, and of course, that's a little bit up above your page. And you see div slash zero exclamation point. And it says here an error icon displays to the left of cell F9, which displays what I just said. And cell F10 displays value. The original formula was E8 slash B5, which is true. Because you copy the formula down the column, the first copy formula is E9 slash B6, and the second copy is E10 slash B7. Although you want the mortgage rate cell reference E8 to change E9, E10 from row to row, you don't want the divisor, so cell B5, to change. We want cell B5 to stay the same. You need all formulas to divide by value stored in cell B5, so you edit the formula to make B5 an absolute reference. So step D, it says click undo. So I'm going to go up here, click the undo button. I clicked undo, and you can see here I have my uh, formula down here. And that says with F8 active, click to the right of B5 in the formula bar. So it's active down here. I'm clicking to the right of B5 in the formula bar. Then it says press F4 and click enter in the formula bar. Now here's the thing, you'll notice when I pushed F4 on my keyboard, it added the dollar signs. This is making an absolute cell reference, those dollar signs. So I pushed F4 on my keyboard and then I clicked the check mark. So enter. And you can see now it's different. Now I'm going to double click the fill handle. This is step F, I'm on the next page. Double click the fill handle to copy the formula down the rate per period column. So I double click, excuse me, double click, and now you can see it works. It says click cell F9, and you can see here E9 changed, but, or excuse me, yeah, E9 changed, but it hasn't swapped for anything else. So watch, I can press the down button, and of course it looks the way it should. All right, step G. It says to save, and then we're on to step three here, and then we're going to actually be done. Use a mixed cell reference. It says step A, click cell H8. So over here, uh, number of um, PMT periods, whatever that means, um, payment periods probably. Um, so cell H8 and type equals G8 multiplied by, so asterisk here, B5. So equals G8 multiplied by G5, B5. Then it says press F4 to make the B5 cell an absolute reference. So I push F4 on my keyboard up at the top. And it says click enter. So I'm going to go up here, click enter. And it shows 300. Then of course we're copying it down the column. So I move my mouse to the fill handle. I double click and then it puts in that information. It says to ensure, this is step D, that the cell H8 is the active cell. So I'm gonna click on that. And then it says click undo to undo the copied formulas. So apparently there's something wrong with it. Then it says step E, click within the um, B5 reference here. So I'm gonna click inside of that. And it says pref Press F4 to change the cell reference to a mixed cell reference. So pressing F4. And you can see it's making a mixed cell reference. So um, the 5 will stay the same, but the column B will change. Or at least that should be how it works. So I'm going to hold down Control and press Enter. So I pushed F4. That's how it changes to the B dollar sign 5. I'm pressing Control and Enter here. And then it says copy the formula down. So I'm going to move to the fill handle, double click on that, and it copies it down for me. And then it says click cell H9. 
Of course, the result is still 360, but that works out fine. All right, we're going to press uh, so step F. It says to save the workbook. And of course, keep it open if you plan to continue. Um, otherwise, if this is the, what you're finished for today, um, make sure you do submit this before you go on to the next thing regardless. Um, here, and of course, this is the file you're submitting for this exercise is E02H1 loans with your last name and your first name. And that is how you complete Excel Chapter 2 hands-on exercise number one.